All right, lads, welcome back to me podcast, Cheaper Than Therapy. Mick Thomas here. How are you? How are you doing? Listen, thanks for liking, subscribing, and sharing, and coming on back. I do, I do appreciate you. I uh, appreciate it a lot. Uh, check out the podcast wherever you get your podcast from, of course. Pass it on. And also available on YouTube. i got a different screen here, today, a different background because I'm on location at uh, the Borgata. Also check out my um, other podcast with my good buddy Corey Brooks, The Man's Anxiety Show, which a new episode is out. came out last week, so check that out. That's available for you to, uh, to watch or listen to, whichever. I suggest watching. They're funny. Uh, Corey put a lot of time into editing it, so I want to make sure he gets... You know, he gets uh, he gets a chance to be praised for his work. Also, come see me live. Listen, I'm doing a tour throughout November of all Long Island theaters. It couldn't be done, they said. Tickets are going fast. Uh, this, the 4th, the 4th of November, Theater 3, Port Jeff, uh, Port Washington on the 11th. I'm doing something for autism awareness because I'm a good guy. I'm a good guy deep down for all those other horrible, nasty things I say. And uh, the Madison Theatre in Rockville Centre on the 24th. What more do you want? Mick Thomas in the theatre. Sure, what? You know, that's where I am now. I'm at the Borgata Casino, Atlantic City. In uh, to the theatre, 1,900 people a night. It's been great. It's been great. Tonight is my last night. And yesterday, I got this fucking cold. I got another cold. Uh, I just, I get run down. I'm just getting run down from all the traveling I'm doing, I think. Getting up at the crack of dawn, going to bed late at night. Uh, I gotta, I gotta fix something. I gotta, but I, I just, I get broken down pretty easy. But, uh, also, I did a podcast with, um, with, with, for a very, a very good podcast, which if you're interested in the Marvel Universe, Marvel Plus, which will be out next week, but I'll share that with you. Uh, I had fun doing that. I had a lot of fun doing that, but, um... It's great down here in, in Atlantic City, man. It's it's uh, it took me four and a half hours to get down here because uh, the traffic was horrendous. Traffic was horrendous. A lot of accidents and and stuff. You know what the weird thing too is like I I nearly got into an, a, a fight with somebody on Long Island because I dropped my son off at the theater where he's rehearsing, and then I said I'd hit the road in the morning time Atlantic to, for Atlantic City. And I was on Long Island, of course. It's always Long Island, right? The worst people on the planet, I believe. Some good ones, you know who you are if you're a good one. But they're just the worst people on the planet, right? Very greedy, selfish, uh, angry people constantly. So I, I got off and I, I was driving along and I, was, I, I realized I got off. You know what I mean? Driving along and you can make a left into this neighborhood, make a left into this neighborhood, make a left into this neighborhood. And I read the GPS wrong, which is fine. And I got into the wrong lane. And it happens. People do it all the time. I have no problem letting people in. So I put my direction on and I came out and I pulled out in front of this guy. He wasn't going fast. And I put my hand up to say sorry or thank you, whichever way you want to take it. And he started giving me the finger. I'm like, okay. So I go down to the next light and it's a double turning lane. This helps if you're watching this, by the way, for my actions. And I turn the car, but he starts to push me off the road. Uh, and then he sticks his finger up as he does it. But he made a mistake. He made a mistake. What he did was he put his direction on to go into his neighborhood because we were right by his house. And I put my direction on because I was going to follow him. I was going to follow him and I caught myself and I had to calm myself down because I'm trying to be a nice part. I'm trying to be a good Christian man. But all of that goes out the window. All of that goes out the window in traffic. I become, and we all do, so don't sit there like you're, you're not. You just, you be, it brings out the worst in you, right? You, you wish death on people. I don't. I, I have calmed down a lot with older people. I don't like if someone's not going fast enough. That's no longer a complaint of mine because I do believe when I get up front, it's always an older person. All people to me are heroes, right? What they've been through in life, they've done it all before. They deserve respect. So if, if, if but it, when it comes down to like road rage, uh, like, like that dickhead yesterday, I nearly followed him to his house. And what I wanted was going to follow to his house and not do anything, but like maybe take a picture of his house and scare him just so he could see me taking a picture of his house. Uh, just to really fucking mess with him, but I, I didn't. It took everything. It took everything in me to not do that. And then I drove. Uh, I drove down, and of course on the parkway it was nothing but traffic, and it just bring reroute you through neighborhoods. Just fucking stress. Just stress. Uh, got here. Got here. Uh, had a great show uh, last night, and it's Halloween. It's Halloween down here, so everybody is dressed like it's a lot of hoary mice and a lot of a lot of slutty cats walking around, um, and then people from Top Gun. You know, because that's what the guy used to dress up as, Top Gun. You know, the jumpsuit. And, and the girls are whore. I saw one whore Top Gun. She was a, a whore Top Gun. She just had, like, 
aviators, uh, thigh high boots, and like a t shirt that was tied up that said fucking danger zone or whatever. Sorry, I got a runny nose. Um, and it's just, just Hori's, Hori's walking around uh, the casino this weekend. And uh, I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of Halloween. I'm not a fan of Halloween. Now, here's, here's, before I get into Halloween, like, I went to see, uh, there's a horror movie came out that my son has been obsessed with since 2015. It's based on a video game, and it's called Five Nights of Freddy's. I highly recommend you watch it. It's actually a decent movie. The acting is good in it. The story is good. Kind of original. It's basically what would happen if you went to Chuck E. Cheese and all the fucking animatronics came to life. Now, they've done cheaper versions of it before, right? They've done, Nicolas Cage did uh, Willy's Wonderland, which was a great movie. Uh, they did the banana splits. Remember the banana splits? If you're my age, growing up, la 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 la. They were evil. The evil banana splits. Um, so it, it it's a good movie. But what? Here's the. Ooh, here's what. Here's what got me. Like I walked into the theater. And I was my son and my friend. My son and his friend went, and I picked them up, and I brought them. Got the tickets advance ahead of time. I walk in. We find the seats. Go right. You lads sit there. I'll go get the popcorn. Because I wanted to make sure, because we were cutting a fine. I didn't want him to miss the movie. So I go out, and I get the uh, to get the popcorn, and I walk in, and, and, and there's commercials on. Not trailers, commercials. You know, for insurance or whatever, and, you know, oil of Yule, whatever you call it, for your skin and all that shit. There was one, com- I walked in on a commercial. I don't know what it was for. I couldn't tell you what it was for. But the video, it's like, the vi- it was a woman getting out of her car. And you can see this. Google this, right? Google it yourself and fact check me again as always. And you can find out what I'm talking about. And it's a woman getting into her car with her daughter, her young daughter, five, six, whatever. And the daughter says, mommy, what's that? And she points to the her garage door, her garage door. And there's a swastika painted on the door in black paint. And it says, no Jews. And then she she hurries the daughter into the car, and the guy fixed. There's a guy next the next door neighbor. He's working on his car with the wrench, right? And he kind of he puts his stuff down. He wipes his hand off, and he walks over. And he's a Middle Eastern guy, right? Middle Eastern guy, which is good. It's good choice, right? Good choice. I understand diversity. Uh, you gotta listen. We gotta put one of them in there. We gotta put two of them. This person. Can we put a trans part? You know, I know the. I've seen the lists, right? I've seen the list. I've been in meetings. For television shows, and they go, you don't have enough of these people in there. Um, so the guy wiping his hand, the oil off his hand, he walks over. Middle Eastern guy, great choice, great choice. You know, just in a lumberjack shirt, regular, regular dude, regular dude. And he leans over and he sees it. So she gets home. She comes home from work with the daughter, and it's all painted white. It's painted over, and she looks over, and the guy's boot has got white paint on it. So the neighbor obviously painted over that, so the daughter couldn't see it. And she does one of those, like, thank you, thank you. I'm like, what a fucking weird commercial. Like, how quick did you make that? It, it, people are gross, man. It's just, and again, you might, it just caught, like, you know, flow from progressive, just, like, swings by, you know. No, don't be anti-Semitic. It, you know, fucking, what's his name, Jake from Steak Far- State Farm? It just shows up. And what's the other guy, the other guy which I love? Uh, fuck, I don't know his name. He's an Irish actor, Irish American, and he does those. Uh, I think it's Geico. You know, I'm a hot girl jogging, or I'm a raccoon, I'm a loose branch, or whatever. I'm gonna have him, yeah. <laughs> like, <coughs> I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Hitler. Like, I'm, a, I'm a Nazi, and I'm off here to make sure. What the fuck, man? Pretty quick. You guys made that pretty quick to get it out there based on the times. To sell whatever product you were selling. And Google it yourself, by the way. Find a commercial. Find a commercial and just, you know, and go, hey, Mickey, you were wrong. It was this, that, the other. Or here it was a commercial for this, that. You know, it was a beautiful commercial, by the way. It was done really well. The acting was great and it, it kind of, it does pull on the heartstrings. But it didn't make me want to go to Ruby Tuesdays, if that's what it was for. It didn't make me want to sign up for whatever product it was. I don't know what it was because I came in towards, it would already, you know what I mean? I, 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 I came in at the end of it. Uh, yeah, so that was, that was, that was it. And now, yeah, it was weird. So that, that's, you know, it's a horror movie and then we're here now for, for Halloween. And I don't like, and people say to me, why, do you, why don't you like Halloween? And I love Christmas, big Christmas fan. I'm down here at the Borgata. I got a beautiful, massive Christmas tree, which is all 
you know, I love it. I'm all for that. More Christmas. And I know people are like, I just posted a picture on Instagram 20 minutes ago. And people are like, no, no, just no. All my message, my inbox is full of people just complaining that I posted a picture of a Christmas tree. That was put up down here. It's too soon. It's You don't have to look at it. Do you, like, does it annoy you that much? Is it too soon? Like, what? It's too soon. I fucking didn't don't look at it. Does it bother you that much? It's a beautiful tree with tinsel and lights. All right, whatever. Whatever, man. To each their own, as I say. I just, like, I'm not a Halloween fan. Do you know I'm not a Halloween fan? And I think I spoke about this before. I'm sorry if I didn't. Uh... I think I did speak about this, but I'll, I'll just do a quick point about it anyway. Like, I'll go to I'll go to a party, a Halloween party. I don't go anymore. I was with a girl back in Ireland. And you open the door, and Austin Powers answers the door. And he's like, yeah, baby. I'm like, I'm going home. And I just left. Because I don't want to talk about the colonoscopy I have coming up on Monday. You know what I mean? With a, with a cowboy. Like, just be the costume, not the character. That's all I'm saying. That's all, like, that's, that's all I'm saying. Can you just do that? Don't fucking... These people go overboard. And I get you want to do it. You greet me at the door. Like, yeah, yeah I'm a cowboy. Pew, pew, whatever. Do, do that once, but just don't fucking... You know what I mean? Don't do it. Like, how's your how's your autistic son doing? Well, man, my autistic son, he's struggling at school, but you know what? Pew, pew, pew. Like, shut the fuck up. Just be a person for once. You don't notice a very inside thing about comedians. We hate traveling with other comedians. One's, it's called on... We're traveling with them and they're just trying to be funny all the fucking time. Some of our comedian friends are vicious and we are. We are funny with each other. Um, but we can also have serious conversations about life, what's going on with us, argue about politics. But just when you're on all the time, it's fucking exo- I just I can't be around it. I just can't be around it. But um, that, yeah, that's what I want to talk about, right? So we're, we, we are being divided again. We're, they're just non-stop basing off the piggyback of the the, the Jewish commercial um, which again I, I'm, I'm online and I'm very fascinated still fascinated about how 50-50 the world is divided on that one I, know, I didn't see that coming I really didn't and that's why I said in my episode about Israel it's so complex that I didn't really offer up an opinion about who's right and who's wrong I just said what the attacks were wrong I said that uh, politically it's all it's a fucking mess over there um, you know, but I just, I'm for, I'm pro life. I'm pro the, 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 you know, preserving life, not killing people over, over religion, politics, land. Um, it's just sad. It's sad. But anyway, I, I, but what's happening now is that we are being divided ourselves again as a country. I talked about this on other episodes. So what I mean by that is California, and you may have heard about this. California now has brought out an ebony alert. So you may be familiar with the Amber Alert. You may be familiar with a Silver Alert. So 2003, they, re- they, they released this thing called the Amber Alert. So if a child went missing, if a child went missing, and some people are like, no, it's not children, it's all people. It's a child. If an Amber Alert is a child, like the two websites I checked on today said that it's a child goes missing, they're able to find it, and they're able to rescue 131 children to date based on the Amber Alert. So now... Now, California has introduced an ebony alert. And basically what that means is now we're going to get alerted if if a black person goes missing. And, of course, the internet is up in arms. The internet, and, and again, here we are, and, we're, and you look at the comments, and we're fighting, and we're fucking fighting with each other. You know what I mean? And what it is is that it, it's, it, it's making it seem... How their trick is they're making us seem when I say us, I say any other race that's not black for some reason, because there's no Hispanic alert, there's no Chinese alert, I mean Asian alert. Right? There's just amber. Um so there's ebony now for black kids and everybody else falls under the same umbrella. So what they're doing is when you go into the comments, some people are just trying to say stuff like, Well, you know, that's terrible. Because now what happens is like, what? We get a message when a black kid goes missing. And then what happens is if they don't find the kid, it's go- they're going to turn that around by saying, well, nobody looked for that kid because it was an ebony alert. Bobby will go looking for the fucking amber alert, which is not the case. And I've always believed that. And I've always said this when I moved to America first. Because when I was growing up, there was no missing children in Ireland. It's just You just never heard of it. Very sheltered country at the time. I don't know what it's like now. I haven't been there in 20 years. I mean, I visited, but I haven't been there in 20 years. 
And I always believe when I moved to America, when I heard stuff like people would go missing, like I didn't understand why you wouldn't shut down highways until that kid was found. Like I genuinely thought that. And no matter what the child was, no matter what color the child was, I always thought if you're gonna if you're gonna have a highway, like the LIE on Long Island, for example, a child's gone missing. Okay, let's lock up the LIE. She was seen being taken in a white van. Lock it up, lock up every road. Lock up every road. Tell everybody, text it, and, and life shuts down for a day. And it's fuck is it is that not okay? Would you not be okay with shutting life down for a day? Like until you find a lost child? I certainly would. I wouldn't give a shit. I wouldn't give a shit. If all of a sudden the cops came along and they put barriers up, hey guys, sorry, can't let you through. Here's an alternative route. We'll you know, we can't you, life stops for a day until we find this kid. Because I mean, wouldn't you find a kid that easy? I'm assuming it would help. It would definitely help. Maybe not easy, but it would definitely help. So now you have the ebony alert. So if, if and you're just saying it's just black. Like, this is the problem. And then the people in the comments are now forced to argue black people and white people, which are obviously the main two, the main two fighters. Uh, but why doesn't the Hispanic people get their own alert now? Was that brown alert? Middle Eastern people? Why don't they get theirs? Indians? Right? Who get, Why? So now we we have the it, it was like the American national anthem, the black black people got their own national anthem and people were outraged. Even black people were outraged about that. They were like, "What's the point?" Because you know what it does? It divides us. It divides us to have. It's like we're all Americans. We all live in one country, but they get here's our national anthem, but here's another one. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. But so what are we doing now? Now we're fucking fighting with each other again. We're on there saying this is bullshit. You shouldn't get. You shouldn't have, like, fucking... I mean, Michael, I just want to go on real quick in case it's getting too serious, but Michael Che wrote a joke because they do this thing on Weekly Update. I don't really watch SNL. I don't watch SNL. Not really. I don't watch SNL. But I get the clips from certain things. And and Michael Che wrote a joke for Colin Jones to read. They do this reverse racist thing where the white guy has to read the most racist shit. And it was... Uh, and he reads... Um, the ebony alert is for when black kids go missing and we all know they're not with their fathers. Uh, very funny joke. But to watch Michael Shea, Mike, uh, Colin Jones just fucking, you know, struggle to read such a, such a racist uh, joke. It's kind of, it's funny. It's, 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 it's really funny. But we're not doing that, right? We're not. So now, and again, they, they do these things, man. They, they plant them because we're, you know, just so we won't watch what they're doing. And again, I got to explain to you people out there, I'm not a fucking Trumper. I'm not a Biden guy, but man, they're all up to some shady fucking shit. And what are we doing? We're just fighting amongst ourselves because we can't all stop and look at how these people are dividing us. We're now fighting over missing black children versus missing white children when all fucking children that go missing should be looked for, right? It's the silver ones I don't care about. The, sil the silver alert. Did you ever see that one? Missing. Honda Civic. Silver alert. All right. Some old guy probably just got in a car and went for a drive. He'll turn up. I don't I don't think... Nobody's kidnapping old people. Are there? Are there? Is that a case? Has anyone seen that one? Where they just kidnapped an old, an old person, a silver-haired fox? You don't see that very often. He's probably just wandered off, right? He's off his meds. Dementia's kicking in. It's sad. He'll turn up at a gas station. He'll be fine. Trust me. Someone's going to find him. He's okay. I don't need to drive on the alley. You don't need to shut down the highway for a silver alert. Sad. We'll find him. We'll get him. We'll get him. Nobody's molesting an old man. I'm just saying. That's all I'm saying. Children, lock the highways down. Let's find him. Let's find him. That's it. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. But, uh, yeah. Oh, God, man. I'm so fucking... I'm so run down. I'm so tired. You know what too? Like, I, I, I saw this thing online, too. And I'll, I'll leave on this one because it's another thing to divide us. It was this, this professor came out and he said, mothers deserve, stay-at-home moms deserve six-figure salaries. I am a stay-at-home dad. It's not hard. It's not hard. And I've done it through all ages. I don't know why women are complaining about it. I don't know. And this is not me to start a fight. This is not me to get women to go, well, how dare you? We have to, it's not hard. It is not hard to be a stay-at-home mom. It's just not. I've done it with all ages. I've taken my kids out. I've gone to the supermarkets. I've done, I've dropped them back to school. I've picked up the groceries, the prescriptions, dropped them to the doctor's office, dropped them to their fucking dance recitals. I've done all of that shit. I've done all of that shit. It's not hard. Why, why are you demanding six figures for it? I don't think you should get any money. I, I don't, I think you should pay the person who goes to work a lot of money. That's, that would be nice when we go back to the 50s. 
Men and women stay home. It doesn't matter who. Pay pay the person a good salary. You come home. Food is cooked, right? House is clean. Kids are taken care of. I'll do that. I do that. That's what I do. That's what I do. That's chauvinistic. I don't care. I don't care. Women, you got to stop patting yourselves on the back. Stop acting like everything you do is amazing because it's not. And, you, and, and you're dropping it. I see you out there. I see you out there every day. You're on your phones in the park. You're not even playing with your kids anymore. I see it. I'm watching you. I'm watching it. You're getting your nails done. You're getting Starbucks. And your kid's just in the backseat driving around doing your fucking errands. Be a parent. Get off your phones. That's what I see. I see it every day. I see it every day. I had a bunch of stuff to other talk about too, but I'm really under the weather. I'm, 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 I'm after taking, look at this. All I took this whole thing. You're watching, so you'll know. I took, took this whole thing just so I could kind of clear my sinuses for this episode to record for you. Because I know tomorrow I'm going to be at worst because the third day of a cold or the flu, whatever I have, is always the worst. So I knew I'd have to just down this just so I can get this episode out. So I'm, I'm probably high on Dayquil. So if I said something that offended you, it was not my intention. And also, I've spoken to this before, being offended is a choice. Uh, anyway, I got to go. Listen, come see me live. Thanks for liking, subscribing, and sharing. I appreciate it and coming on back. Uh, and as always, listen, wash your hands, you dirty fuckers. Good luck to you. Good luck to you.